1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse number 58. Thank you, Jesus. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Father, one more time, we entreat you by your divine spirit. Speak your eternal words of life. We ask right now, Father, that you would help us as we mature and grow in you. We pray, oh God, that we would be stable. We pray, oh God, that we would not flinch. We pray, oh God, that despite the things we're challenged with, oh God, that somehow, some way, oh God, we'll push through it, we'll overcome. We'll keep pressing, we'll keep seeking, knowing that your hand is on us, ready to move. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that, the, that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Just grab someone by the hand real quickly as we introduce our theme and just tell them grow through it. Tell them grow through it. Grow through it. Turn around and just grab somebody else by the hand and tell them grow through it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have approached a new series of lessons and messages entitled Grown Folk Business. Uh, certainly it is our desire as a believer amen, to fully understand in God's challenge for us in the area of maturity, and God's challenge for us in the area of growth. And certainly, amen, as we and dive into the scripture today, it's important that we understand that we are privileged people. And we are marked people. And just because we're privileged does not mean that we don't have obstacles. We don't have storms. We don't have moments where we need to rely heavily upon the strength of God to help us navigate and to get through it. We are special, we are chosen. However, this peculiar anointing that rests on us, amen, does not circumvent the challenges uh, that life presents, the adversities that you and I must go through. Certainly, it was the peculiarity of the children of Israel that found themselves, amen, having to deal with opposition. And certainly, when we liken our spiritual condition now that we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus, it's important that we understand that many of the things that we model in our life are uh, fashioned after that of the challenges that predecessors and uh, our joint heirs, the Israelites, had to deal with in their uh, relationship with God. In so much that scripture records uh, on a number of occasions the opposition they faced getting the purpose the opposition they faced, amen, getting to the place that God orchestrated, predestined for them, a place flowing with milk and honey. And certainly, Scripture says that uh, their challenges included oppression. Challenges included someone who did not honor the God, made them special. The scripture tells us their rose. Pharaoh who knew not, amen, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't have respect, uh, the peculiarity associated with their call. The scripture says that this taskmaster that arose uh, to challenge this choice people made life so difficult. And certainly the difficulties that he placed on the Israelites uh, left them with no other choice 
but to endure. And the result of their endurance is something that doesn't make sense. The scripture says the more they were afflicted, the more they grew. It's interesting how challenges promote growth. Challenges promote, amen, the things that God would inherit us, amen, as believers, amen, to move into. And it's quite interesting that we as believers sometimes don't understand, amen, the nuances associated with this growth. And as a result of it, amen, I think it's very fitting that we talk about grown folk business, the hurt. And sometimes the agony associated with doing God's will. Ladies and gentlemen, before we dive into the particular text here in the book of Corinthians, it's important to understand, amen, that there are certain characteristics and disciplines that God affords us as believers to mature into. Uh, certainly we can shout and we can dance and we can do religious things, but God has an expectation of our life. And we dealt with this this morning uh, in Sunday school about growth. Amen. Understanding, amen, God's word will help us have clarity and perspective to be able to accomplish his will for our life. Ladies and gentlemen, we as disciples must grow. We must grow through our reading of God's word, our learning through our circumstances, and now learning to apply God's word to our life. That's how it works. We talk about all the time that, amen, in our Bible study, amen, that the measure of growth amen, is by taking heed to God's word and continuing in God's word. Then are you my disciples indeed? Amen. Amen. Certainly our disciples, our discipleship is a growth of tool that comes through us through the application of God's word and our obedience to it. This is the instruction that's given to Joshua as he must lead a people by taking the mantle and taking the people forward. It's interesting that Jesus, amen, would give us this admonishment, amen, even in the book, amen, of Matthew chapter number four, when he's dealing with his own, amen, uh, obstacles. And certainly no one, amen, is devoid of challenge. He himself, amen, has to deal with adversity. He himself has to deal with the very devil himself trying to tempt him, to take him off course. Certainly, ladies and gentlemen, amen, the track of the disciple must always be to grow. It must always be to mature. It must always be, amen, to expand, to accelerate, amen, in our understanding of who God is. But most importantly, amen, as we unlock our purpose, amen, becoming the disciples that God has called us to. Ladies and gentlemen, I find it quite interesting Amen, that as we explore, amen, God's word, amen, that we understand, amen, that true discipleship after our acceptance of the Lord of Jesus Christ, amen, comes, amen, with a liberty that many of us don't, amen, think that we have. And certainly, we believe that when we get saved, we are now restricted. The scripture tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter number four, amen, that the free course of God's word gives us liberty to discern our hearts and it leads us to make changes. What does that mean to me? It means that growth is intentional. It means, amen, that we must purpose in our hearts, amen, through the Holy Spirit, amen. We see this in 2 Thessalonians as well as, amen, the book of Colossians, that as we read and hear God's word, that we are to now lead lives that are informed, amen. We are to lead lives that are now equipped. We are to lead lives now that are inspired and convicted and rooted, amen, with God's word. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, as we go forward, amen, in this, amen, understanding of growth, especially dealing with grown folks, I think it's important that we understand that there certainly are stages, according, uh, uh, stages associated with our growth as believers. The scriptures tell us in the book of Isaiah chapter number 55 and verse 11, Amen, that it is the wisdom and the power of God's word, amen, that is alive, that allows us to produce what is in us because we are now joined through salvation with the purpose to do what he has instructed us to do. And so part of our grown folk discussion today is understanding the stages of our growth and understanding where we are in the mark of maturity. 
Some of us never quite understand where we are in our own personal maturation. The scripture tells us, amen, that in our stage of growth, and according to the book of Ephesians chapter number four, that he's given us apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for our equipment, for our equipping as saints, amen, that we, amen, may do the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ till we come into the unity until we are resolved in our spirit concerning the knowledge of the Son of God. Amen to the perfect man, and most importantly, amen to the measure of the statute that God has called us to fulfill in Christ. It is important we understand this last part, though, of the book, amen, of Ephesians 4. It says that we should no longer be children, <laughs> tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine and by trickery men in the cutting craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking truth in love, may we grow up in all things into him who is the head, which is Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, it's important we understand the stages associated with our growth. The scripture tells us, amen, that when we first come into the knowledge of God, we have a period of innocence. The scripture tells us in 1 Peter chapter number 2 that as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that they may grow by, uh, that they may grow thereby, amen, we as believers that are born again must desire this milk for growth. The scripture tells us that if any man, amen, is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Amen. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If there's one thing that, amen, we have now, amen, in our salvation, amen, is certainly an innocence. However, this innocence, amen, if not carefully, amen, confronted, amen, will lead to an ignorance. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you mean by that? Babies, amen, and I never forget, amen, Christopher, amen, probably because he is, the, you know, the last of, of, of my tribe, amen, but I certainly, amen, recall a time, amen, when Christopher, amen, wanted to put everything in his mouth. <laughs> there was an ignorance associated, amen, with his adolescence. It's, there is an ignorance associated with, amen, the things that are to come in. And certainly, amen, babies are ignorant of the fact of what should and should not go in their mouth. <laughs> and it's important that we understand this as believers, that as we grow, as we mature, amen, it's important that we understand that whatever feeds our flesh will starve our spirit. <laughs> ah, whatever feeds your flesh will starve your spirit, and whatever feeds your spirit will starve your flesh. Ah, I know we'll catch up to it in a couple days, but ladies and gentlemen, the things, amen, that we feed this flesh <laughs> pull us away from God. The things, these, this thing, the thing that this flesh enjoys, amen, puts a barrier in between our growth in God. However, I, tr I trust and believe the things that your spirit man enjoys, your flesh gets frustrated by. <laughs> ah, yes. Ah, yes. Your, your flesh doesn't like it when you're in prayer. Your flesh doesn't like it when you, amen, are in consecration. Your flesh, amen, doesn't like it when you're in worship. Your flesh doesn't like it, amen, when you, amen, aspire to do the will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, the flesh, amen, has a fit every time it's put on the back burner. But trust and believe, every time you promote the things in your flesh, you starve out, amen, that spiritual drive. You starve out, amen, that spirit man's desire, amen, for the clinging of the things of God. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, it's important that when we move from this period of innocence, if we aren't careful, we'll get involved in the ignorance phase. And then most importantly, amen, you got to understand the stages of irritability. Ladies and gentlemen, babies can be easily spoiled. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we live in a day and time when we have spoiled believers. We have spoiled, amen, Christians. Uh, babes, amen, want everything. And when they don't have everything, when they get everything, they throw a fit. Ladies and gentlemen, we see this now, amen, in uh, the spirit, amen, the irritability, amen, of the believer, amen. God doesn't move when I want God to move, and so I throw a fit. God doesn't answer how I think he should answer, and, and, and I'm unnerved. Ah, yes, and, and, and if God doesn't perform how I want him to perform, in some cases, I give up. In some cases, I don't end up hold up my end of the bargain because I become irritable. Ladies and gentlemen, these are stages of growth that we must confront. Grown folk conversation. Now, serving God, sometimes you won't get your way. Some of you faded on me 10 minutes ago. It's all right. But just touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes we won't get our way. Come on, come on, come on. Some of you right now are upset with God because he's not letting you get your way. <laughs> uh, some of you right now are frustrated and you're irritable because, amen, you don't get your way. You don't get, amen, the things, amen, that you think you should have right now. But ladies and gentlemen, I come to encourage someone today, amen. And God says, amen, if I gave you what you wanted, amen, you wouldn't have the maturity to embrace what it is that you're asking yourself from asking for <laughs> and if there's nothing more discouraging it's getting what you want and not knowing what to do with it and uh yeah there's uh yes i've been there before when i professionally wanted to be on a current trajectory and and i wanted this and i wanted this without the patience and found myself amen in the role in the position amen but not amen with all the things necessary to be successful but i wanted it because i saw somebody else and i thought that i should have what they had and ladies and gentlemen you better be careful because everybody married ain't happy <laughs> Everybody, amen, with a big car, amen, ain't happy. Everybody, amen, in church up before you, amen, ain't amen on the mountaintop. And so we've got to learn to get delivered from comparison, but we also got to learn how to grow up. <laughs> You don't get your way sometimes, amen. The scripture tells us in the book of Ephesians 4 and 14 that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. The scripture says that, amen, if we aren't careful, we will have the propensity to become, amen, unsteady children. They cannot, amen, they, they cannot start out with something and they, they have no follow through. They have no, debil uh, no dependability. We, we have to be careful, amen, that as believers, amen, that we don't, amen, operate as kids in the fashion of curiosity. And, and, and we aren't careful, amen, we'll find ourselves in the affairs of things we have no business being in. <laughs> uh, yes, if, if we aren't careful, amen, we'll become talkative and 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 we won't learn the value of silence we won't learn the value of putting a muzzle even on our criticisms and our opinions and and certainly amen as children amen if we aren't careful amen we will amen uh ex we won't have the exercisement of restraint that's necessary to develop in god ladies and gentlemen in order to grow you have to exercise restraint Ah, uh, yes, and in order to grow in God, you have to exercise resolve. Ladies and gentlemen, amen, as we move into the stage of adulthood, and, and certainly, amen, there are some of us who've been in, been in church 20 years and still, amen, ah, uh, yes, have this child-like, uh, uh, amen, demeanor. Uh, some of us have been walking with God a long time, and, and even in walking with God, amen, we're still irritable believers. We're still spoiled, brat children. We haven't grown just yet, amen. And how do you mark your growth in God? When you start maturing in God and reaching a place of maturity in him, what ends up happening is you learn to start esteeming earthly things, amen, lightly. 
How do you know, amen, that you're maturing in God? The concerns of the world don't concern you as much. <laughs> uh, the scripture says we see Moses' amen maturity, amen, because when he came of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the characteristics of growing, amen, is to esteem the earthly things lightly. You cannot put earthly things above spiritual things and grow spiritually. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a grown folk conversation because, amen, uh, uh, yes, when we start prioritizing the world things above, amen, our spiritual growth, then prayer becomes optional. Coming to the house of God becomes optional. When we, amen, uh, yes, uh, yes, start promoting, amen, the things of the world, amen, above our spiritual growth, amen, communion becomes optional, and even, amen, more importantly, amen, our conscience toward the things of God becomes jaded, and I'm not talking about necessarily a physical building, I'm talking about the priority of the hustle and bustle of temporary things as opposed, amen, to the development of that which is per uh, permanent, which is your spirit, which is your spirit man. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, uh, yes. I love to take a good vacation, but there's, amen, no place on earth, amen, I'd rather be than in the presence of God. And when you and yourself psych yourself out to believe that there's a place here on earth better than the presence of God, you got to ask where you are in your stage of growth. <laughs> Wrong folk conversation. Ain't gonna get too many amens. Amen. <laughs> uh, today, ladies and gentlemen, amen. Third John tells us, John, the third amen, uh, a letter that John writes to us tells us, beloved, I, I wish of all things that you may prosper, amen, and be in good health, amen, even as thy soul prospers. <laughs> We've got to keep the first thing first. We got to keep the first things first. Uh, uh, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes, how do we grow? We have to make sure that we are doctrinally sound. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to make sure, amen, that we hold that to that which had been first delivered to the saints. It's in 2 Peter 1 and 10. He says, therefore, brethren, uh, be even more diligent uh, to make your calling and election sure. And if you do these things, you will never stumble. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. What makes us solid and unshakable? John, amen, 2 Peter 1, amen, 3 through 9 would tell us, amen, uh, yes, that it is his divine power that he has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through his knowledge of him, amen, who called us by glory and virtue. He says, by which have ye been given to us an exceeding great and precious promise that, amen, through these you may be partakers of his divine nature. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, we've got to understand that we need to be doctrinally sound in this season. He would go on to say, by this very reason, he says, give all diligence. <laughs> and given all diligence, he says, add to your faith virtue. Uh, yes, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, amen, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things, amen, uh, are yours and abound, you will never either be, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, the scripture tells. This new King James tells us that whoever lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. <laughs> ah, yes, all of this, ladies and gentlemen, is about growth. It's about moving and maturing into an area of God. <laughs> ah, yes, that doesn't allow us, amen, to revert, amen, to the crutch of the old man. Ladies and gentlemen, as I go forward, amen, uh, yes, I, I, I tell you, amen, that in all aspects, amen, of our walk with God, it won't be easy. 
Growth is not easy. Growth is not easy. <laughs> uh, yes, we must understand, amen, that the Lord has made room for us, amen, uh, yes, to expand, amen, by not just being joint heirs with him, uh, yes, but by being joint, amen, participants and partakers of his suffering. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, he tells us, amen, in the book of Romans 8 and 17, that he who suffers, uh, uh, yes, that we have a son who suffered in Jesus Christ. Uh, we have, amen, amen, our father, amen, in heaven, who, amen, sent his only begotten son, wrapped himself in flesh, amen, for the very purpose of suffering. Uh, yes, but amidst the hardship that we find, amen, we find peace, amen, uh, yes, and we find fidelity in suffering. Uh, yes, we find purpose in suffering, just like the Israelites. They found, amen, growth even in hardship. They found growth even in affliction. The more they were afflicted, they grew. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you that growth is, e uh, that affliction is essential for growth. <laughs> uh, yes, as we read further in the book of Romans chapter number eight, we know that despite these challenges, this entire passage is devoted amen to amen the affliction of the believer but despite all these things we have a God in his wisdom that purpose every affliction uh, yes and despite the adversities uh, yes despite the hardship and persecution and famine and nakedness and danger and uh, yes and sword nor neither death nor life nor angels or demons nor things present nor things to come uh, yes shall be able to separate us from the love of God uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I share these few things with you associated, amen, with growth, amen, and hardship and affliction and get you on your way? It's important that you understand, amen, uh, yes, one of the biblical scholars, amen, likened affliction to the, to the seven E's. So please write this down. I hope that you take a text message and message yourself. But uh, he likens our suffering with Christ, amen, to these, amen, seven essential ease. Uh, yes, why amen is suffering? Why is affliction necessary? One, uh, yes, it enhances. Uh, yes, the scripture tells us, amen, uh, yes, that God in his loving fashion uses hardship in the life of the believer uh, to enhance our relationship with God. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those of us, amen, who deal with affliction, those of us who deal with hardship, Ah, uh, yes, we don't pray like we should pray until we find ourselves in affliction. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, it isn't until, amen, you find yourself backed up in hardship. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, that your prayer language becomes clear. And so certainly, amen, affliction comes to enhance. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, it is, amen, in the book of Corinthians, chapter the first Corinthians, chapter number 10, that says, no temptation has overtaken you. Ha, that is not common to man. God is faithful. Ha, ha, yes, God is faithful that he will not let you be tempted above your ability, but with the temptation, ha, he will provide a way of escape that you might be able to endure it. Hmm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, yes, uh, he tailor makes, amen, uh, yes, affliction for us that our relationship with him might be enhanced. Uh, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, as we, amen, journey a little bit further, it's important we understand, uh, amen, that, amen, this enhancement that comes to us, uh, uh, yes, is a need that we have to rely on God for counsel, uh, which is is a good thing. Uh, yes, yes. It's in, amen, the book 
amen, of Second Chronicles. <laughs> uh, yes, that we see, amen, the dynamic, amen, of the Israelites, amen. Uh, King Asa, amen, when he was in trouble, the scripture says he became even more unfaithful to the Lord. <laughs> uh, yes, affliction, ladies and gentlemen, hardship, amen, has an ability to enhance what's already inside of us. I found it interesting that when trouble came to him, it enhanced what was on the inside of him. And ladies and gentlemen, affliction comes sometimes in our lives so that God can see through the heart. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. You better learn to appreciate, amen, your storm. Ah, because God is putting a microscope on your motive. God is putting a microscope. Ah, yes, on your relationship with him. Ah, yes, don't feel good, but sometimes God will put a storm in your way just to see what kind of resolve you have, what kind of worshiper you are, what kind of praiser you are, what kind of believer you are. Ah, yes, it don't feel good, but sometimes God will orchestrate something in our lives to see. Ah, yes, are you really faithful? Ah, yes, are you really patient? Ah, yes, are you really using of the spirit? Amen. Ah, yes, the fruit of the spirit. Ah, yes, that's been applied to your life. Ladies and gentlemen, amen. What else comes, amen, through, amen, affliction? Somebody write this down, experience. <laughs> ah, yes, it is the Apostle Paul. I'm taking my time today, y'all. Ah, who tells us in Philippians chapter number three. Ah, Paul talks to us and he tells us. Ah, ah, yes, this marvelous picture. He shows us, but he talks to us. Ah, ah, and tells us of this wonderful understanding of a Affliction. He says this, uh, uh, that I may know Christ. Ah, uh, uh, yes, through the power, amen, of his resurrection. Ah, uh, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, how do we know Christ? Uh, we know him when we can experience, uh, amen, even his challenge, uh, even his opposition. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have uh, a clearer picture of what the Lord went through unless we have hardship uh, and unless we have affliction. Uh, uh, we'll never quite get what it means for him uh, to be faithful to the cross uh, unless you have to be faithful in misfortune. Uh, uh, yes, you will never have an understanding of what it means uh, for him to bury and carry your sins far away uh, until you must be dependable. Ah, uh, uh, yes, when you've been forsaken. Ah, uh, uh, yes, I'm coming up the hill. Y'all just stay with me for a quick moment. Uh, Ah, yes, Jesus too suffered. Ha. He looks out amongst the city in Matthew 23 and says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, ha. Ha. you who killed the prophets ha. and stoned them that sent you. Ha. How often have you longed to gather your children together ha. as hen gathers their chicks under their wings ha. and you are not willing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, amen. Uh, not only does adversity come and challenges come, uh, amen, to enhance and to give us experience, uh, but it also comes to expose. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, God uses, amen, our hardship to expose the sin remaining in us. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter number eight, in verse number two, he says, remember, uh, uh, Moses is telling us, amen, uh, is telling the children of Israel, he says, remember how the Lord your God uh, led you all the way of the wilderness these 40 years uh, to humble and test uh, you in order to know what was in your heart, uh, whether you uh, would or would not keep his commandments. Ha. Ladies and gentlemen, God sends affliction to expose. Uh, yes, he sends, ex uh, he sends, amen, uh, yes, affliction. Ha. Uh, yes, so that our obedience may be revealed, our faithfulness may be revealed. Uh, yes, why does God use affliction? He uses affliction to engage. Ha. 
Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is important to understand. Uh, uh, yes, that amen. It is amen. Uh, yes, the Apostle Paul who tells us uh, in the book of Thessalonians. Uh, yes, you guys should love one another, but love one another even the more. Uh, uh, yes, he's speaking amen from his own personal challenge. Uh, uh, yes, that when you and I go through, it sparks an engagement. Uh, that renders us servants of God through our demonstration of love. Uh, yes, you become more graceful in affliction. Uh, you become more patient in affliction. Uh, you become more understanding in affliction. Uh, uh, yes, you become, amen, more philanthropic, amen, in your affliction. Uh, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, some of you, uh, uh, yes, have to go through uh, that God would develop your character in engagement. You don't think about nobody else's challenge uh, until you're challenged yourself. Uh, you don't think about nobody else's pain until you're in that pain yourself. Ah, uh, yes, ain't going to get too many amens for this. Ah, uh, yes, but God will bring the right storm. Uh, he'll bring the right amen challenge. Uh, amen, so that you can remember the burden of the other believer. Ah, uh, uh, yes, I didn't mean to bore y'all today. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, and he uses affliction so that we may exhibit. Ah, uh, uh, yes. God will use your hardship to put you on display. Uh, uh, wake your neighbor up. I know y'all sleepy on me. Just wake your neighbor. Say neighbor. Uh, he's using your storm to put you on display. Uh, he's using your challenge to put you on display. Ah, uh, uh, yes. He puts you up. Amen. That amen. You may be on exhibit. Uh, God wants to put some of your faith on trial. Uh, he wants to put some of your faith on exhibit. Uh, uh, yes, a few weeks ago, we were in Baltimore, D.C. Uh, we went to the African American History Museum. Uh, whatever, I forget what it is, the Smithsonian. Uh, we went by and we saw so many exhibits. Uh, uh, yes, we saw so many displays. We saw the worst. Uh, uh, we saw the worst of our experience. Uh, and then as you kept going higher, you saw experiences and exhibits uh, uh, where things got better. Ha. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants to use your life as an exhibit. Ah, uh, yes. Ha. Ha. Does he have permission? See, the problem with some of us ha, is we're closeted believers. Ah, uh, yes, no, you can't use my cancer ha, because I don't want nobody to know I had it. Ha. You can't use my divorce because I don't want nobody to ever know that I had an issue. Ah, uh, yes, you can't use my layoff ha, because I'm too embarrassed to tell you ah, ah, yes that I lost my job ah, the devil is a liar ah, can you tell your neighbor God wants to use you as an exhibit ah, of what faithfulness is in the storm ah, ah, yes of what it is ah, ah, yes to have to go to dialysis ah, but still be faithful to prayer ah, what it is to tithe on a fixed income ah, what it is to lift your hands ah, when it seems like the world ah, is against you. Ha, what it is to press ha, under pressure. Ha, do I have your permission ha, to use your life? Do I have your permission to use your struggle that somebody can see salt, somebody can see light, ha, that somebody can see a true believer? Wake up in here. Ha, I feel like having church all by myself. Look at somebody and tell them, grow through it. Feel the wind of God in here. How uh, do I have my your permission uh, to put your life on exhibit? Uh, that People can say, okay, that's a praiser right there. Uh, that's a worshiper right there. Uh, that's a believer right there. Uh, they should have gave up and quit. Uh, I don't know how they got on that boat and made it here, but somehow, some way, uh, they're in the land of the living. Somehow, some way, they're in the south of God, praising him, waving their hands, uh, lifting their voice. Uh, come on in here. Uh, let's demonstrate faith. Uh, let's demonstrate a resolve to worship God in the worship of it. Come on in here and give God glory. Somebody give God praise in here. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shake hands with somebody and ask them, does he have permission to put your life on exhibit? Come on, turn around and touch somebody else. Ask him, does he have permission to put your faith on exhibit? Somehow, some way, I didn't go crazy. Somehow, some way, ah, yes, I wasn't locked up in the cuckoo house. Somehow, some way, I didn't catch a case. Somehow, some, I walked away from it. Somehow, some way, I kept my integrity in corporate America. Somehow, some way, I kept my resolve. I kept my drive. I kept my passion. Come on in here. Give God a praise in the house. Uh, 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 yes, tell somebody uh, he uses your affliction uh, to equip you. Uh, come on, talk to him. Tell him he uses uh, your trials to equip you. Uh, yes, he does. God did not comfort us uh, in our suffering only to comfort us, uh, uh, but so that we would comfort others uh, who suffer. Uh, can you do me a favor? Uh, can you just put your arms around somebody and tell them this sincerely tell them if I can survive so can you if I could push through it so can you if I can get through it I said put your arms around somebody and tell them if I can make it so can you if I can get up so can you if I can run on so can you I feel the I'm equipped to encourage you because he used my struggle to tell you I cried but he answered and if he answered me he'll answer you too come on in this library open up your mouth come on you're equipped come on you're equipped if I can praise him in the valley so can you if I can praise him with bad news so can you if I can praise him and I don't see a way out so can you Hallelujah. My last E is that God uses. Come on in here. Look somebody in the eye and say, neighbor, God uses. Come on, put your preaching voice on. Say, hey, neighbor. Come on, talk to him. Preach like you want me to preach. Say, hey, neighbor. God uses your affliction to elevate. Can I get some help. Put your hand behind your ear and say, hey, neighbor, God uses your affliction to elevate. I feel like having church. Come on here, Joseph. Come on in here. The more they put me in the pit, the higher I kept going. The more they put me in prison, the higher I kept I felt like I was going to be a college professor. But do me a favor. Let's have church today. Do me a favor. Get out of that seat and say, neighbor, my pain promoted me. Touch five people. Get out of that seat and tell them my pain promoted me. My pain pulled me up. My pain wouldn't let me be depressed. My pain elevated me. My tears elevated me. My bad days elevated me. Come on, pull somebody and said, neighbor, these tears took me higher. My valley took me higher. The cancer took me higher. The bad report took me higher. I feel like having church all by 
myself. Lean on a neighbor. Say, hey, neighbor, grow through it. Grow through it. Grow through it. Grow through the tears. Grow through the misunderstanding. Grow through it. Grow through it. Hallelujah. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Shake their hand like you're going to shake it off. And say, neighbor, we have a charge. Say, neighbor, the preacher can preach all of 1 Corinthians 15. But tell them, neighbor, God grew in the affliction. Squeeze that hand. Shake that hand like you're going to shake it off. Say, neighbor, the pain couldn't stop Jesus from getting up three days later. Squeeze that hand. Shake it off. Shake that hand off. And say, neighbor, this storm can't stop you either. This setback can't stop you either. These tears can't stop you either. This heartache can't stop you either. Squeeze victory into that hand. Tell him, grow through it. Grow through it. He sprung up three days later. And I expect your faith to rise. I expect your joy to come back. I expect, I expect you to overcome. I feel like preaching to myself. Forget your neighbor. Lift your hand. I expect a resurrection. I expect that same power that raised Jesus from the dead to quicken my mortal body. Somebody in here, throw your head back and give them the loudest praise you can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Find you a new neighbor as I get out of here. Find you a fresh neighbor and say, neighbor, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, have stubborn faith. Tell them, have stubborn faith to hold out when you don't see it. Tell them, have stubborn faith to keep pressing when you don't see it. Have stubborn faith to keep holding out when you don't know how God is going to work it out. I feel like dancing all by myself. I feel like praising him. Preach with me. Turn around. Say neighbor. Preach like I'm preaching. Say neighbor. Oh neighbor. The wind is coming. But don't you move. Haters are coming. But don't you move. Storms are coming. But don't you move. It may look dark. But don't you go nowhere. I feel revival in the house. Tell somebody, be unmovable, be unmovable, grow through it, grow through it, expand through it, overcome through it.
I'm finished. That, that word unmovable in the Greek, when translated, it means to be stubborn. <laughs> and that word abounding means to excel or to grow. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, always flourishing, always growing in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Ah, God. Grown folk business. <laughs> Grown folk business. The Apostle Paul is telling this church that's dealing with maturity issues and, and competition with what Moses taught versus what Jesus now gives as instruction. And he uses chapter number 15, I preach from it all the time, concerning the dead in Christ and the corruptible putting on incorruption and the mortal putting on immortality. He talks about everything that Christ came to do. Again, y'all, I can't exhaust this like I want to. But he leaves the conclusion of the matter in this weighty chapter by saying, beloved brethren. That beloved, we go back and we see uh, <laughs> when the voice of heaven declares over Jesus, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. It is a mark of endearment. But there's also a charge. Those of you who are loved, those of you who are disciples, we have this charge. Be diligent, be steadfast. In this day of challenge, hold. Hold to character, hold to principle, hold to the sound word of God. Be unmovable. Resist the temptation to feel like I have to go to another pot of soil to grow. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Flourish, grow, push through it. That word abounding, I mean, that just blessed my heart, Sister Bell. It just blessed my heart that it dealt with growth. Keep growing in the work of the Lord. You're going to grow. It's going to feel futile. You're going to grow and it's going to feel insignificant. You're going to grow when you're going to feel underappreciated, undervalued. Come on, grown folk talk. Come on. You're going to grow and you're going to feel like, what's the use? He says, I want you to know that your labor I want you to know the things that you're going through. I want you to know the challenges that you're facing. I want you to know the things that you're going through. They are not in vain. Just tell somebody it's not in vain. Your tears are not in vain. The pain is not in vain. The struggle is not in vain. The trial is not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. It's not in vain. <laughs> but the
the last thing is not that it's just not in vain. It's not in vain in the Lord. Using the whole banner of Jehovah. Using the whole banner of his strength. Using the whole banner of his power and of his might. The things that we're doing are backed by heaven. That means he endorses the struggle. He endorses the fire. And through your growth process, he wants you to take heed that if I set it in motion, not only am I going to defend you, but I'm responsible for the growth. I'm personally responsible and accountable for the things that I put in you to mature you and to bring you to an expected end. Come on, somebody give God praise in the house for his word. So what do we have to do? Just tell somebody, grow through it. What is your instruction? Grow through it. Grow. No, not just go through it. Grow through it. You've got to start seeing the things you're going through. As conduits for growth. You got to stop seeing the things you're going through as just things. Oh, everybody is, yeah, everybody has a turn. No, 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 no. You got to see what God is doing and how he's shaping your character to put you on display that your faith might be exhibited so people will see your life and say, I can make it too. I can hold on to I can praise God in two. I can be faithful to. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise in the house. Come on, lift up a worship in the house. Come on. I'm lifting my head because I'm growing through it. I'm lifting my voice because I'm growing through it. I'm lifting my heart because I'm growing through it. It don't feel good, but there is a purpose. I don't feel like it, but he's elevating me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, mature worshiper. Come on, we know what to do. We know what to do. Come on, somebody raise up a worship in the house. I need to hear you. I need to hear you. I need to hear you. Don't get distracted. Come on, somebody worship him. Come on, I thank you for it. Come on, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you. I thank you for it.